Okay, we're gonna get into the Iraq War video. Just thought I'd show you this. The trail goes right up by this house. I can't imagine the money <laughs> that went into building that place. But what a what an awesome place to live. Let's uh, let's turn the camera around, and get a selfie. All right, so first things first, let's give a shout out to uh, all the people in Wisconsin who've lost their jobs in the oil industry, all the people in Texas who've lost their jobs in the oil industry, all the people in Pennsylvania who've lost their oil jobs in the fracking industry. Uh, and uh, my heart bleeds for the 100 and I think the last count was 180 to 200,000 people, high paying jobs that are gone under the Biden administration. So for whether you, whether you agree with that or the Green New Deal or not, that's a lot of people out of work now. And uh, my, my heart bleeds to you. Uh, the Hunger Games are here. Uh, if you ever get a chance to watch that movie, that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm going to start doing. Um, and hey, I got to get this one out there, you Robin Hood kids. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck it to the man. You stuck it to the man. That was awesome. It was awesome what you guys did. Oh my God. Took down them hedge funds. Uh, they deserved it. And then, of course, what did they do? You know, the government stepped in and just blocked you guys from trading. Uh, because, you know, it's all rigged for the, the big fish. The big fish. Uh, but you know what? At least you, you, you made a statement and you did a beautiful thing. You know, if you're going to continue with this, uh, this rebellion, uh, you know, with your with your small investments, um, silver is being shorted quite quite a bit right now. So maybe you want. I mean, because but I own silver, and and you know I shouldn't be telling you that because you know of course it's going to benefit me. Um, so, but it is being shorted if you if you're still going that direction to uh, to buy into things and and stick it to the man. You know, maybe that's something to think about. I'm not saying silver's the best play. You know, you got AMC, which you stuck it to them there. That was great. And uh, uh, anyway, I just I just love the whole thing. Uh, that's enough of a selfie. Let's go back to the woods and uh, we'll talk about the uh, the Iraq War. But hats off to you, Robin Hood kids. Yes, beautiful. You stuck it to them. That was great. All right. So back in, uh, you know, well, the Gulf War, let's just talk about the Gulf War first. Uh, you know, that, that, that war, luckily I wasn't there, thank goodness. Um, but, you know, if you, if you recall Bush Sr., um, he developed a coalition. And uh, there was about, uh, I, I want to say about 650,000 troops uh, at that time that invaded Iraq and uh of course, the war was over very, very rapidly, and I give Bush Sr. a lot of credit because uh, what he did, well, he, he abandoned the Kurds, okay? He should not have done that. The Kurds were our allies, and uh, Saddam Hussein persecuted them for years after that war up in northern Iraq. Um, but uh, as far as, you know, going in, getting the job done, and getting the hell out, that's, that's where he was successful, and that's why the Gulf War will always go down in history. Uh, and you had enough troops. See, when you when you were invading with 650,000 plus all of the, well, it, you know, it just so happened, Iraq, the boy, did Saddam was saying, what a complete idiot. Just like the people running our government right now. <laughs> you know, they're all idiots. And because, uh, you know, we had just beefed up our military, you know, after the Soviet Union threat, uh, which had, had, the Soviet Union, of course, was gone. So now we got these new M1 Abram tanks and we just had all of the new technology you know we had basically been just under reagan we had just built the military up beyond belief i mean there was no force on the planet earth that could even you know hold a can plus he, he built a coalition so the french were there you know saudi arabia i mean everybody was there to fight that war and uh you know you saw how it went it was over i mean i just my heart bleeds for all the Iraqis that died, you know, because Hussein was such an idiot. So let's let's bring it up to 2003. Now, for whatever reason, uh, you know, Bush, after 9/11, you know, we we knew where the the attack came from. It actually came from Saudi Arabia. Most of the guys that flew those planes into the buildings were actually out of Saudi Arabia. Saddam Hussein, for example, was or not Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden was from Saudi Arabia. You know, so that attack didn't come from Iraq and uh, but Bush you know he wanted to finish up what his dad let go and uh, and by the way I'm back then I was for 
the war, I think it was a good idea. Because at that time, we were spending massive amounts of taxpayer money um, in, in just basically keep creating no-fly zones over Iraq. And I had to go over there and participate in some of those exercises. Uh, and it was just, I'm thinking, well, why don't we just go in, take this guy out, and be done with it? You know, and save everybody a ton of money and time. And, uh, and so that's what Bush decided he was going to do. At least that's what I thought he was going to do. And uh, so, you know, we, we, and just to tell you the waste of taxpayer money and how your government just uh, uh, obliterating everybody in this country, even back then, I mean, what's that, 20 years ago? And now today, you know, we got Biden. He's going to spend another, what, two, let's see, another two trillion, I think. Uh, another two trillion tax increase on the on the taxpayer. Uh, that's a that's a real good idea. Let's just just keep printing money, printing money, printing money until the dollar is basically worthless. So did want to let's just pause here for just a second. I'm gonna get a breather and uh, take a break, and then I'll continue the second half of the video. But I kind of wanted you to see this. This is the old dump there. Okay, this is this is a fire break with utilities. Going here, hey, California, fire break going here, and then you got a fire break going there. And the trail, you know, you boy, look at how well maintained this is. And I can't believe I'm the only, I haven't seen a single person since I got out of Baseline Park. You know, it's just like people just don't know that this is even over here, which is good. That's good. I, I'm glad I can come out here and hike by myself. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off right there gather my thoughts and then we'll continue the video when I get a different look further up so I, I always try to get the weird stuff <laughs> but look at that I mean what was that meant to be I wonder and they just brought it right along and just left it there to rot I mean I you know massive telephone pole or or what anyway we're just kind of hiking down the path and I thought I'd uh you know, because I, I bumped all the way up into the war, and I did not really describe what it was like before the war started. So if you remember, after 9-11, the uh, uh, Bush grounded all the, all the planes in the country. And so, you know, because I lived near an airport up in Michigan, near in Dearborn. And uh, so it was kind of eerie that, you know, there was no planes flying anywhere in the country. And uh, so if you, if you lived th through that period, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, we we did the same thing over in uh, Kuwait. Now, like I said, we were we were like mushrooms. <laughs> you know, they, they didn't tell us squat, but you knew when because it, you got to remember. Like I said, there was more planes on that base in Kuwait than has ever been anywhere in the world. And so when they grounded all the planes, it was about it was about two weeks before the start of the war. Um, you know. You knew, I mean, even though nobody's telling you anything, that, that this means that you're going to war, you know, at some point. And uh, so we just kind of, you know, kept doing our thing, getting the planes ready. But, I mean, no no flights in the base, no flights going out. Because what they were doing was they were conserving the fuel because what they wanted was a blitzkrieg on Iraq, you know. So, because if you, if you came in and, you know, just started hitting them with a few planes, you know, no, you, what they wanted to do was just one massive attack you know and, and and you know total surprise and just just obliterate them and uh so anyway so it was kind of weird and eerie uh for two weeks before the war not a single plane flying nice and quiet just kind of kind of like today you know you're not hearing anything and uh so then i remember the day of the uh the war began and uh so you you know it's it's, it's funny because when you're on that base and there's so many planes, and they're, 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 they're trying to get them all off the ground. They wanted to hit Iraq with everything we had, and all those planes were fully loaded. So let's just give you an example. You know, those A-10 Warthogs carry, um, you know, 30, I think it's 32 or 33 bombs. Those are 500-pound bombs, and there was hundreds of them on the base. So, you know, you've got these A-10 Warthogs taking off, and none of those bombs are coming back. I can't even believe that there was that many targets to, to bomb. And uh, so you, you just heard all around the base. <laughs> all the engines were starting up at one time. And, uh, you know, being, you know, maintenance crews, there's nothing for us to do. You know, so all we did was 
it was just like in the movie Apocalypse Now. I don't know if you if you ever get a chance to watch that movie. What a great movie that was. And you think, well, no, no, war can't be like Apocalypse Now. It really is, you know. So we're, we pulled up chairs because, uh, you know, we, we can't work on the planes. They're all taken off. So we, we pulled up chairs and we sat on the flight line. And uh, I think I was having, you know, something to eat. I think a candy bar or something because we were getting a lot of, you know, people sending us stuff over there. And uh, so we're just sitting out there. And uh, so what they did is the there was, you know, two runways. you got your inbound runways and you've got your outbound runways. Well, since nobody had been flying for two weeks, they opened up, you know, all the runways as outbound runways. And so we just, we just sat on the, the one runway and uh, it was just unbelievable. You sit there and you watch the planes <sighs> taking off four at a time, going down that runway. Of course, they're going down the other runway, which is over here. And uh, that went on, I, I would say, hours. I mean, we just sat there and watched the planes take off, watched them take off. And I was thinking, my goodness, you know, all that firepower. I said, you know, Iraq... You're about to go back to the dark ages because we're going to bomb the ever living heck out of you. And uh, but I mean, it was kind of a just a weird feeling sitting there watching those planes take off, you know, for hours. I mean, because there were so many planes fully loaded. And then what what was kind of weird is after they all took off, then things got quiet again, you know, for a while. And because uh, you know, they're all, finally they're all up in the air. I mean, it took. Like I said, two or three hours, and uh, they're all going down. And man, I can't, you know, whoever put together the uh, bombing missions, you know, I can't imagine how many targets they must have had. Because, uh, you know, and we did get to watch uh, some of the videos, and that'll be time for, for another story down the road. Uh, but, uh, you know, all those planes, they can't bring those bombs back to the base. They have to drop them all. So what were they hitting? I mean, God, they must have just blown the hell out of Iraq and uh, it's just kind of a kind of a weird feeling I hope that we never have experienced that here in the United States with an enemy uh, bombing us like we bombed Iraq but uh, anyway that was uh, that was the beginning of the war that's how it went all right let's get back because we I do have a different look here on the trail I unfortunately they've really widened it out which is good and bad you know in winter time here it's nice to have a nice wide trail to hike on um, but in the summer I would rather have things growing up closer to the trail so that you just don't bake in the, in the sunlight and uh, anyway just uh, just my my idea there all right so um, what they did waste the taxpayer money was they actually flew my entire squadron over to uh, Iraq and uh, well Kuwait actually and um, so we're there, and uh, it was still operation at that point. Southern Watch, the war hadn't, uh, well, we knew the war was coming, but, uh, you know, anyway. So, you know, they could have just kept us there. If, if, if you think about the amount of taxpayer money that it takes to move, you know, airplanes, and it's not just the planes, people. It's, the, it's all the equipment that it takes to maintain those planes and all of the electronic warfare equipment, which is where I was. And then, of course, all the troops and everybody. So they flew us all over. We stayed there, I don't know, a couple of weeks or a month. I can't remember. And what did they do? <laughs> they turned around and flew everything back to the United States. I couldn't. I mean, can you imagine the millions and millions and millions of dollars that we spent, you know, getting everything over there ready, you know, ready, ready, willing and able to go and then flew it all back to the United States. How stupid can you be? And then it wasn't, I bet it wasn't a month, maybe two. And there we were, everything was being packed up again. And now we're going back to Kuwait, the same spot where we were. Uh, another millions and millions of dollars in taxpayer money. You wonder why the United States is gonna bankrupt. It's because we've got complete idiocy in charge of this country. And uh, I hate to say it, you're doomed. <laughs> you are definitely doomed. Because there's no way that dollar is gonna continue to uh to exist uh, but anyway let's let's get off of that i don't want to depress everybody but that's why i come out here and go hiking because i don't have to think about it i can just sit out here and you know lions and tigers and bears woohoo all right so back to the uh the war um so so we get there and uh you know the first thing that happened was turkey uh, i'm just trying to give you a little bit of history here 
they would not allow us to base uh, the planes in Turkey because uh, we were going to have a, a two-pronged attack on Iraq. Not just come from Kuwait, we wanted to be able to bring them in from Turkey, and they were against the, uh, the invasion of Iraq. Uh, and it should have been. I, I'm not. I'm not uh, saying anything bad about Turkey. I think they made the right decision, personally. But uh, what happened was now all those planes that were going to be based in Turkey ended up in Jabber, uh, Kuwait. And then what happened was the carriers, the uh, fuel costs were getting really, really high. So what did they do? They brought all the carrier planes into Jabber, Kuwait. So really, I would in the history of the world, okay, I think that was the the biggest concentration of air power in one spot that has probably ever existed in any war in history and may may you know may go down in history ever again you know unless we we face aliens <laughs> you know and, and then we got to bring the all the air forces of the world together to go out like on independence day and and fight them off uh, that'd be the that'd be the only way i think we'll ever have a, a, a base so that base was never constructed to handle that uh, that much activity um so it was a disaster Oh my God! The uh, and I just I don't want to gross you guys out, but the bathrooms, um, because the the uh, the fields, you know, when you when you flush your toilet, it goes somewhere, right? It goes into the septic area. Well, when you've got you know so many thousands of troops on a base that was only meant to hold hold about you know 500 or maybe even a thousand. Uh, oh, got somebody coming. I'll I'll continue the story from finally. I actually see somebody out here. What do you know? Yeah, it's always good to talk to people. It turns out that uh, that trail I was hiking, it looks like they're going to cut it in as a mountain bike trail. So that'll be cool. And you can kind of see, he just pointed out to me, I didn't even notice there's ribbons over here on these trees over here. Well, hell, let's, let's walk on over. <laughs> let's, let's check that out, and then I'll continue my, uh, my Iraqi war stories. All right. Well, it's, there's got some blue markers on the trees going that way. And then they got the orange markers going this way. I swear, hiking through them woods, I always worry about a snake. <laughs> He's going to jump up on me and uh, you shouldn't be here. All right, so uh, getting back to Iraq. So the bathroom situation was just horrendous. The, uh, the toilets were overflowing and, uh, you know, unfortunately in the Air Force, uh, the chain of command breaks down. Um, unlike in the Army or even the Marine Corps, you know, if you have a, a first sergeant in the Army or a first sergeant in the Marine Corps, um, you know, you, you pretty much know them. I mean, you, they're there with you every day, letting you know what's going on, taking care of you and, uh, you know, looking out for you. Um, but when we got to uh, Kuwait, I never even knew... I, I, to this day, I could not even tell you the name of my first sergeant. And so you're basically, you know, in, in the war in the Air Force, at least when I was at Kuwait, you were, you're on your own. You know, you've got no chain of command. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I, he's probably dead now, so I can talk about him. But uh, my shop chief, uh, who rules your life, uh, he lost his mind during the war. Um, it was pretty bad. I, you know, he, he basically would sit uh, comatose. Uh, in a corner and just stare at the wall. Wow, that's a, <laughs> you know, we always got to get the weird stuff, don't we? What in the world is it? Looks like it must have been once upon a time a trampoline. Yeah, that would have been a trampoline. What's it doing back here in the middle of the woods and a couple of chairs? Bizarre. Okay, so so there was nobody there to uh, to look out for us or take care of us in any way, way shape, or fashion. And in fact. Uh, you know, this is just, it's going to take me a long time to tell all these stories. I'm just going to make one video today. But uh, I got I got sick at one point, really sick. I mean, I was, you know, imagine the worst case of flu that you can imagine. And uh, so now that, you know, we've been embarking. Yeah, you can tell this is a new trail. <clears throat> it's kind of tough to hike here. I didn't didn't bring my gear. Um, but uh, so, you know, I here I, you're working 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and never a day off. Because, you know, basically your shop chief would be the one saying, hey, these guys need a break, or, you know, take them into town, let them, uh, let them have a beer, you know, do, do something for the troops to, to uh, keep morale up, you know. The only thing we had was these stupid uh, 
bingo games. Who gives a crap about that? And uh, But since he lost his mind, you know, I never, ever got a day off for, you know, four months. Four months straight through. So then I go to this stupid doctor, and I'm sick as hell. And I, I told him, I said, I just need to... And we, we were sleeping in these huge uh, warehouses. If you, it's the only way I can describe it on bunk beds. And so there's like, you know... 500 guys in one warehouse all on bunk beds so you know it's a lot and can you imagine 500 guys you can't get no damn sleep i mean there's so much noise the doors are banging open and shut because you you're going 24 hours a day and uh and so the, the accommodations were just ridiculous uh i do believe we had a little bit of air conditioning back in there thank god because it was hot as hell and uh but anyway so i go to this doctor and uh, he says, he says, well, uh, you know, you, you get back out there on the flight line and continue working because I am not going to help you shirk your duties, young man. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I've been working 12 hours a day for the last two or three months. All I'm asking for is just a couple of days to recover from the doggone flu. And that son of a gun wouldn't even let me do that. So when I got back, I mean, that, the only thing I could do with the guys, I said, you know, I just, I, I couldn't, man, I'm tri tripping on everything. I said, I can't do anything, you know. So I would just lay out on the bench outside the, uh, the bay and, and just sit there and suffer, you know, because that's all I could do. I, you know, there's no way I could work. It was ridiculous for me to be on duty. I would have been a lot better off back in the bunk bed. So that's kind of my Iraqi war story. I think I'm... I'm going to turn back at this point. They, they've done a good job cutting this in, but uh, I would rather just get back. And I got a long, long hike to get back to the car. Maybe we'll get something on the way back to, to look at. I think that's enough video for one day. And uh, next time I come out hiking, we'll continue with the, uh, the Iraqi war stories. Um, I know that they're not as colorful as uh, what I did in 29 Palms when we had all the explosives. Uh, you know what? Hey, one one last good story. Um, you know, and this is when I knew that, uh, that females should be uh, allowed to uh, perform in combat roles, and uh, that was a good thing uh, that came out. You know, from recently is you know why why are you going to have women in the military who can't serve in combat roles? Because it, not only does it it limits their career, okay? Because a lot of those uh, those those jobs, you know, combat jobs, they pay better and you get, you, you advance up the chain of command a lot quicker and faster. So by, by discriminating against women, um, we were limiting their career path. So I never understood why they were going along with not being able to fight. So here's my woman's story, all right? So here's, here's a female pilot flying an A-10 Warthog over top of a rat. And uh, I mean, she got hit. She got hit hard. I mean, that plane was just, it was tore up. You should have, I mean, I, I got pictures of it somewhere, and someday I'll put them up on the internet for, for you to look at. And uh, so they, they told her, you know, you need to bail. You need to bail out. And uh, she said, screw you. I'm flying this plane back. And it should not have been possible. I mean, for, can you imagine flying a plane back that's been hit by a couple of missiles? I mean, and so she, somehow she limped that plane all the way back to the base against orders uh they they told her to you know to ground it but you know i, I don't blame her can you imagine if she got captured in iraq what her life would have been i mean you know you would think of mccain when he was a prisoner of war in in uh, vietnam her her life would have been hell i mean so you know i i don't blame her if you, you if you think you can get the plane back do it man i so anyway, the, uh, they cleared the, they cleared all the runways. You know, you got to remember, they hundreds and hundreds of planes going in and out of that. But when she came in, they cleared all the runways. They cleared everything. All the sirens went off because we were honestly expecting her to pop, pile up on the on the runway, and you know have a massive explosion. And uh, man, she she landed that thing <laughs> and, and actually brought it in. I how in the world she did that is beyond my wildest dreams. Um, so yeah, don't don't ever tell me that women can't fight. I mean that that's don't, there was I, I guarantee you there, there's many men pilots that could not have flown that plane back to the base like that, uh, and that achievement was just she should have 
gotten the Medal of Honor, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think she did. I don't, I, I'm sure she got a medal of some sort. I hope she did. I never heard about it. Um, maybe I'll look on the internet and say female pilot flies plane back after being shot up over Iraq and see if anything comes up. Uh, maybe I can find the story and uh, well, I'll tell you, the, the, as Paul Harvey used to say, that will be the rest of the story. All right, so I'm heading back to the car. This is always the depressing part of the day. I love it when I get out and I'm adventuring and seeing new stuff. Uh, I hate turning around and hiking back. And now I've talked about the Iraq war and I, I don't have anything to talk about because I want to save uh, my stories for the next video. Because, you know, if you can't put them all up at the same time, I'll, I'll run out of stories to tell. <laughs> You're probably saying, no, oh, Kirk, you'll never run out of stories. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah, I am crazy. That's for sure. <laughs> all right. You guys, uh, peace out. Uh, be safe. Um, you know, we're, we're heading for some troubled times. You know, continue to become resilient. You know, I'm continuing to work on that uh, vegetable garden in my backyard. That's kind of my next uh, thing. You know, make sure that you're stocked up on everything imaginable. Uh, and I'd say, no, nah, no, toilet paper. Hoo -hoo. But I mean, any, anything that you think that you might need uh, if the crap does hit the fan, which it's got to at some point. No way, no way we can continue printing all this money. All right, y'all have a good one. Well, I, I, I guess I, as usual, I, I did have another video to make because I've, uh, <laughs> I'm lost at this point. Oh, there's, there's some orange, wait, what are they doing way over there? Because I lost the orange ribbons and I'm just out here in the middle of the woods. I guess I just need to come on this way. The thing is, I gotta get back to that car. I can't just keep hiking around in, in the woods lost like I am right now. And, uh, you know, it's, it, you, you might say, well, Kirk, it doesn't look like that hard of a hike. But, you know, this this is virgin ground. It's kind of hard hiking through here. So I'm going to get up to the orange ribbons here and uh, we'll keep going. See, because how in the world did I lose them? Um, I mean, they've, they've done a pretty good job marking it in. But uh, it's not really going the direction that I need to go to get back to the car. So luckily this phone has a flashlight. Uh, but yeah, I guess this is where they're taking the trail. Huh. Nothing like being uh, in the middle of the woods. <laughs> oh, by the way, the guy did say there are a lot of coyotes back here. Now, I've never heard of them attacking a human. Um, but I see that there is it is a possibility and not having any bear spray and I'm not packing anything you know so it's uh you know you could you could get into a situation uh, where you know somebody who lacks common sense like me <laughs> and just comes out here hiking through the woods you know could, could get get myself into a pickle but uh, we're gonna keep following these ribbons and I, I'm really going to probably have to cut through and try to get back to the Florida Trail at some point. I just kind of want to see what this looks like. But you can tell, they, they, you know, it's, it's going to be a while before you can ride bikes through here, that's for sure. Okay, even I have to admit defeat at some point. You know, this is hiking this, you know, that's could get dangerous because you could have a snake hiding underneath them needles anywhere along here. So, and you can see the the underbrush is coming up so I'm turning back and I'm going to try to cut across here and I think that's going to get me back to the Florida Trail but I'm just going to be literally hiking through the woods at this point um, so because I just don't want to be on a trail that's this uh, this virgin without it the proper equipment plus it's tough hiking through here you know they're, they're, they're still you know they're still working on it it's going to be a while before you can ride a bike but uh, you can see I can I can cut through here and uh, I'll get another video when I get back to the Florida Trail because that'll be a happy moment. At least I hope I'm going the right direction. See what happens.